Sanjay Hegde and try and comprehend the Congress's legal strategy. First, they delay this by more than a week. They don't go to the Sessions Court. There's some sense that Rahul Gandhi may want to pay political martyr, want to surrender himself. He doesn't do that. They don't go to the High Court or the Supreme Court either, going back to the Sessions Court where they've now challenged the conviction and sought a stay. What do you make of the strategy? And do you think this could be more efficacious than appealing before a higher court? Uh, I don't speak for the Congress or its legal team. But nevertheless, as a lawyer, what they've done is the correct thing. Always go to the court of lowest jurisdiction, which can hear the case. And here there is a full appeals process from the magistrate. You go to the sessions judge. And then uh, if you do not get relief, go up the ladder. Uh, the problem with directly approaching the Supreme Court, and this is what I tell all clients, is that if the Supreme Court says no, then there is no other court which can say yes. So to that extent, going to the uh, Sessions Court, I think, is the right move. They have a formidable lawyer in uh, Mr. R.S. Chima, who has been uh, uh, a former Advocate General of Punjab. He has also been the prosecutor in the cold scam cases, and he <coughs> has a tremendous knowledge of... Uh, criminal law which is highly respected across the board. So I think uh, I can't find fault with their uh, uh, legal defense after the conviction. How long do you think this process in the Sessions Court could take? Because Rahul Gandhi may have to leave 12th Tughlaq Lane. He's already been served a notice. Uh, Parliament will only convene now in the monsoon session. So there's some time for Parliament. But he may have to leave his house. Is that a factor? How long do these things typically take in your view? Well, I can't predict uh, the court process, especially because I do not practice in Gujarat. But I would normally expect that it would be one or two hearings uh, on the stay application. After all, we are only considering whether the conviction should be stayed. What's the or grounds for be. stay? Why should the judge consider staying this conviction? See, uh, you must remember that here the two-year sentence was the maximum sentence allowed. And but for the two-year sentence, Rahul Gandhi would not have been disqualified. If he had been in sentence to one year, 11 months and 29 days, he still would not have been disqualified. No, what are your grounds for staying? No, no, so, is, so, yeah. so, so, the, so the basic point is the disproportionality of the sentence. Secondly, the, there is also the question of jurisdiction itself. What happened in, Ko, uh, in Kolar, could you take notice of it in, in a Gujarat court? Thirdly, there comes the question of whether uh, the complainant, Purnendu Modi, <coughs> had a cause in defamation itself, because uh, he was not in anybody's contemplation. And as you yourself said, there is no one monolith uh, Modi identity which is restricted to one community. Uh, that's like saying that if somebody said uh, something about Sanjay Hegde, then Puja Hegde, Virendra Hegde, Mahesh Hegde, and everybody with the surname Hegde could take action for defamation all over the country. That's not how the law operates. Okay, let me put those so, questions to Satyapal Jain. One, the disproportionality of the sentence. This is the maximum sentence that could have been given. That's one of the arguments with, that will be used by the legal team to ask for this sentence to be stayed. How do you respond? If it had been just one day less, he wouldn't have been disqualified as MP. The Congress lawyers will argue that the whole idea is to get RG disqualified as MP because he's proving to be a political thorn for the government. See, under the IPC, which was enacted as back as 1860, section 499 and 500 are there on the book right from day one. I have not been able to find out any amendment in that. And section 500 says that if you uh, commit an offence of defamation, you can be sentenced to two years plus fine or both. So it's to say that it's only sentence part is there, fine part is also not there, not correct. Number two, see, the, we have a different system. Executive, legislature and judiciary, what punishment has to be given, how much has to be awarded, that is the discretion of the judicial it's magistrate. up to two he years. Exercise but, his okay, but Sanjay Hegde respond to that, Satyapal Jain's counter, that yes. it is for the judge to decide. Sanjay Hegde can't decide whether it's two years or not. The judge in his wisdom thought that Rahul yes, Gandhi should be sentenced for two years. So the, judge, the judge's judgment is being questioned and therefore it will, it will definitely be said it's disproportionate yes. because in a great mass of defamation cases, Rahul, as you know, normally people are let off with an admonition or a fine or in very bad cases of defamation, a month or two. 
What was it that prompted an unprecedented two years? May I just make one point? Yes, Mr. Jain, go on. May I just make one point? Go on, sir, go on. I I say, may I just make one point? May I say, whatever you are saying, that according to you or Rahul Gandhi, the judge has given the excessive punishment, this will be a matter of argument in the appellate court. This session judge will again examine the whole issue, again find out, and if the session court feels it is excessive, he can reduce it. I am really surprised, a pure question of law, legal and constitutional issue, why an attempt is being made to criminalize, politicalize, and give an impression as if because of this no, and because of that. Let's come to the second issue, Mrs. Indra which Gandhi was raised was, by... The election was set aside, she had gone in appeal. Which was raised by Sanjay Hegde. This is the issue of geography. Uh, the comments were made in Kolar. Does a court in Surat have jurisdiction over a comment made in uh, Kolar? That's the second question he raises, Satyapal Jain, from a legal perspective. Because of the reason, because of the reason, because of the reason that these comments might have been made so far as the particular place is concerned, but they have been telecast on the television throughout the country. And now, again I will say, if you feel jurisdiction is not there, they should have gone to the High Court to challenge the issue of jurisdiction. Mr. Hagedi and we know very well, daily we are arguing the cases, uh, going to the higher court saying that this court has no jurisdiction. And High Court decided the issue of jurisdiction. Mr. Rahul Gandhi did not question the jurisdiction. Mr. Rahul Gandhi did not regret or tender his apologies. Mr. G Rahul Gandhi and his team, for the reason best known to them, did not take the case, perhaps from our assessment, as a lawyer, as seriously as it should have been taken. Now, ultimately, they have to face the Ajay consequences Kumar, as per law. you want to respond to that, that maybe some of this could have been avoided if the Congress took the case more seriously. RG seems to have taken it very lightly initially. They didn't put up a strong enough defense. Yeah, so, uh, Rahul, one fact that uh, RG seems to have, uh, you know, if you do any kind of search, you get to Mr. Bawal's statement on schedule trust and schedule trust, and it's confirmed. Because I just was searching for that, uh, so adequate uh, reference material is close to one to five. Just to set that aside as a matter of fact. The, uh, the most, see, I was loving the uh, Mr. James speaking. The question again is, why did we go to the high court? Why did we question the jurisdiction? The, the matter is simple. If the BJP politicizes this case, then they are not politicizing. If we decide on a strategy whether to go, we, went, we took our time, we went to the uh, to the appropriate court uh, to file our appeal. That is our strategy, and we will put our and we will put the uh, right in front. There are so many issues. Did the judge uh, in, uh, initiate 202 under CRPC uh, under the CRPC to initiate investigation, but took it to motor without any investigation by any police officer to conduct any inquiry, which is beyond the jurisdiction. Also, it was not in jurisdiction. But then the, CR, the law clearly says that the judge should also get it inquired under the, under Section 202 CRPC. That didn't happen. So you can keep arguing on the legal final uh, uh, finesse of uh, you know legal fine points, uh, which both the learned uh, lawyers have adequately equipped. The issue is uh, simple. What anybody with a common sense? The law is for the people with common sense. On 2019, Mr. Gandhi makes this statement in Kola. The case gets filed. The gentleman, the complainant goes and gets his stay for a year, two years, approximately. Suddenly, Mr. Gandhi speaks against the Adani, against um, the relationship between Mr. Adani and Mr. Modi on the 9th of February. Within nine days, the person goes to high court, uh, uh, withdraws his stay, and the trial starts, and Mr. Gandhi.